Hello and welcome back to part four of the Electrical Industry Networks training drawing. And we've already taken a look at the cover sheet and we've also taken a look at the E1 sheet and talked about the keynotes and some of the other nomenclature that's around here on this particular page. So let's get on into uh, the third page of my plan. So it's sheet E2, two or three sheets and we have a couple different drawings uh, or a couple different things going on here you've got a drawing of your service panel uh, another panel a transformer yeah, it spells out up here on the transformer that's suspended from the rafters rather than sitting on the ground we have some one line diagram notes we'll take a look at those bring that down here and this is important up here to note when you're bidding, not specifically for uh, installers, but uh, it's good to know for the guys that are installing, but um, the contractor field verifying the existing conditions, be familiar with what's going on there prior to the bid. No consi additional considerations will be allowed after the bid. Um, some contractors can get real, real touchy on this and say, you know what, tough it was on the plans you should have walked the job that's the way it is but in my experience and time after time there's always been exceptions and uh, I wouldn't say this is the final word but be aware of it um, especially if you're starting to bid dash lines are indicating existing equipment so some of the stuff earlier you saw was in dash lines on sheet E1 uh, you want to verify existing conditions and note any discrepancies and stuff. Again, this is prior to bid. Right there. You have uh, responsible for all indicated equipment code compliance clearances. In other words, if, uh, if you're installing a panel and it's in a room and it's too close to a sink, a wall, a door, or whatever the case may be, uh, it's kind of throwing the responsibility back on you. So that's where uh, knowing your code comes into play here. Engineer, electrical engineer may go in and just kind of take a look at some of this stuff and, and not really take out physical dimensions. They just draw it up the way they want it and kind of leave it up to uh, us out in the field. You coordinate with the city and uh, all the jurisdictions code compliant. Uh, you want to notify the architect engineer discrepancies as soon as discovered. Uh, sometimes they may have on the one line that it's a um, one inch conduit and then all of a sudden you find out that it's actually a, a three quarter. You want, might want to bring that up at that point in time. Additional requirements, complete contractual obligations, um, GFP on site, these are things that you all want to read through and uh, check it out and see what they have to say. Let's take a look over here at the actual one line itself. I've left out uh, on purposely the size of the conduit and the wiring right now because it's not part of this uh, video series. All I want to do is make the point that uh, you have an existing service with a meter and a disconnect. Now this meter and disconnect could be an all-in-one unit. Uh, it could be split just the way it is right now. Um, you know, that's one of those verify, field verifies. So from that point, you got a conduit going over to your first panel, which in this case is a 277-480. Um, just because it's shown being drawn underneath like this doesn't mean that it's underground. It could be could be overhead um, you know field verify this here more than likely because you're going and suspending up to a wooden rafter more than likely this stuff will come out of the top and then you feed back down into the second panel which is your low voltage panel again these are just uh, arbitrary numbers in here that I've thrown in so um, we don't want to go too ballistic on you know a 30 kVA transport for 100 amp and 100 amp panels. It's, it's all arbitrary right at the minute. It's for demonstration purposes of how this is laid out. And then we have our AFCI cal AFC calcs. 
Um, I've taken all the information out of a, a previous one that I did. Again, this will just tell you all the different uh, pieces of information that you need in here to figure out your AFC calcs. You have a load summary in here. Uh, the low panel is lighting, receptacles, water heater, miscellaneous stuff. Uh, this all gets filled in, then you can get your total load calcs on this. Uh, the city inspectors will uh, need to know that, as well as uh, the utility companies. Especially when you go to get a meter, uh, you get your demands, this sort of thing. You got a panel symbols list, kind of goes through. If you've got these little uh, symbols on the side of your panels, which you'll, we'll go to that next panel schedules. Kind of gives you an idea of um, exactly what that particular breaker is or for and the specific purposes of it. We'll take a look at this again. This is just one of many types of panel schedules. Uh, it depends on who your engineer is, but uh, most important is that they all describe this information up top here is, you know, the name of the panel, uh, is it main lug only, is it a breaker, is it 120, 277 uh, AIC breakers, are they 10K, 22, 42, 65, very important information. Then you'll go through and all your um, circuit numbers here are in here, so if you take a look at uh, the, like the, the sheet E1 will say LP13 and 15 in this case would be our outlets and I think I designed our designated number one as lighting and then you'll be filling in your wattages in here. Wattages will be converted and uh, to get your total amperages. You'll notice uh, 135, this is a three phase panel so um, you know all, all your odd circuit numbers are on the left side, all your even circuit numbers are on the right side. Um, you're going to get that whether it's a single phase or three phase panel, but uh, I wanted to bring up the fact this was a three phase four wire. I forgot about it a second ago. This particular one also tells me the depth that it's six inches deep, and really it's only five and three quarters. It gives you a little bit of play for your drywall and for mounting and stuff like that. Um, doesn't really give you the width on it or the height because they all vary. Uh, specifically on a panel board, um, almost every single panel board that I've installed in a, in a general sense is 20 inches wide. And actually it's 20 and a quarter and that is important especially when you're starting to mount to wood. But nonetheless you want to pay attention to that. The the height of it, those are going to vary and you would be checking your submittals for those. Now that we've taken a look at all this, this is just your general basic information. And we have, uh, we went over the notes here, we went over this other information up this way. Uh, as far as just the one line, uh, the conduits and such uh, panels, load summaries, uh, went over that, the AFC calcs, and your symbols list. So that pretty much covers it for the one line diagram. So far we've taken a look at the sheet E2, which is the one line, sheet E1, which is your um, panel information, receptacles, lighting, existing conditions, and then again going back to your cover sheet here. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for part 5 and the final one in this series and that one will be discussing all the specifications and much more information that you need to know. Thanks for watching.